zero. Six. Under the microscope, you could see how the light was following the cellular structure of its wings. The neural simplicity of the insects seems to prevent a full-blown infestation, so there's none of the hemorrhaging I'm seeing in the birds. But Stephen's wrong. This isn't an attack. It's a byproduct of the attempt to communicate. It's getting smarter. It's learning as it adapts. I'm confident of a breakthrough soon. Breaker, Breaker 9, call in on 9. This is Lost Cowboy looking for anyone out there. Hello? Breaker 1-9. Breaker travel in Sherlock. Charlie, you out there? Over. My, my Hello? Family, my, my wife that? and kids. Yeah, I'm blessed. Well, what you've got to do. I can't do it. Don't ask me to do it. You're asking me to sign their death warrant. My own family. Damn it, don't you think I'm aware of that? I'll still be here when you drop the fucking stuff. No. Don't you lecture me about no. sacrifice, you, you spineless stupid, of a shit. stupid bastard. If you're so full of ideas, you come here and try dealing with it. Tell them the time when we had a choice is over. Tell them to do it. You've got to do it now.
I hung up on Stephen. He doesn't understand. Even if he were here to experience it directly, I'm still not sure he would. There has to be a way of consolidating, of offering reciprocal amplification to the signal. The radio telescope in Tower 6 is burned out. The background radiation coming in from the Penrose region is off the scale. It's like mathematics is bending along with the light. Everything is bathed in a strange glow. My face is still numb from the burn. How's your sister, Frank? We've not spoken since the funeral. Ah, I see. Well, uh, listen, I, I, I did rather wonder if you might do me a bit of a favor and check in on her, see if she's all right. Dr. Wade, if they drop the bomb, there'd be no left but cockroaches and Wendy Boyles. <laughs> it's a bit odd, really. There's an old chap, John Coles, regular visitor at Lakeside, went walkabout sometime last night, now it appears Mrs. Boughton has done the same. Enid? Well, that'd be clever. They amputated her leg last spring. Yes, that's the thing. I've also got a surgery full of people with nosebleeds and headaches. The council are saying influenza, but I've been practicing for 35 years and I'm not convinced. I just wondered if you might pop by and see her. Even if I did, do you really think she'd let me in? Fine. Forget it. I'll see her. Leave it to me. Oh, and Frank, call the hospital and get them to collect all this stuff. It's been eight months. Bloody England. You can't just stop the train, stop people travelling about the place. I don't like it, Frank. I don't like it at all. Well, nobody likes it. No sense sweating cobs over it. Oh, folk all riled about it, giving me grief. I didn't stop the bloody trains, did I? And did they give me any warning? No, they bloody didn't. 
Yesterday, it's all like keep them calm, Howard, minor disruptions, and today it's all government edicts and not until further notice, and you'll manage. Half the village has vanished. It's a couple of people. It's hardly half the village. Oh, right now. You forget, I've seen things. I was in the Falklands. I tell you, I got out the old air raid siren to test it this morning. Air raid siren? What on earth are you going to do with one of those? I found it in the station storeroom. Took it home, stuck it under the bed. Thought it might be worth something one day. Oh, damn it! It's all right. It's just a nosebleed. Here, use my Yankee. It's clean. Oh, thanks, Frank, thanks. It's been getting like a bloody drain all day. All the power spiked with the last discharge and then went out again, and I could see the aurora dancing around Tower 6. At the same time, the headache intensified, and I think I began to hallucinate. Old and new memories are clashing and tumbling around me. <laughs> We're on the cusp of a breakthrough. I can feel it. Miss Graham. Morning, Frank. You look a little out of breath. What's up? Bloody observatory gates have failed. I came to see if I could borrow a ladder. Bloody hell, there's a 12-foot drop the other side of that wall. I'm old, but I'm not useless, no. Can I borrow the ladder? No one said you were useless. Reese. Hi, Frank. Fetch Graham the ladder, will you, lad? It's round the side of the barn. Will do. And you be careful. I don't want Stephen Appleton coming mithering round here because you've broken your neck. What are you up to? Get out of my way. This is important. You've been with Lizzie. You mess with her, I'll knock your bloody block off. I son. need to track the pattern. It's critical. What are you talking about, Stephen? People are sick. Birds are dying. My cows are dead. Where's Kate? Set up at the tower for all I know. I could recalibrate the radial coordinates on the primary oscillators. If that holds up... Stephen, where's Kate? What's going on? Just keep out of my way.
You never mentioned anything about them sickening yesterday. I checked them last night on the way back, and they were fine. I woke up this morning, and the whole lot had gone. Tell me, Charlie, have you heard any birds today? Well, I've not really been paying any attention. That sister of mine reckons they're dropping out the sky all round the reeking. And Dr. Wade reckons there's sick folk all over the village. Meg said not to bother trying to get deliveries out. Set the quarantine in the whole valley. I reckon it's best we just sit it out. It'll all come right, Frank. This'll all come right? Yeah, right. I am sorry about your cows, Frank. But when things settle down, they'll see you all right. There's got to be provision for this sort of thing. You want to listen to the radio more? Things don't seem like they're settling no. down at all. I tell you, Charlie, something big is happening. go. Oh, thanks, Frank. That should get it out of the way. I don't know what happened. It just died on me. Give it another go. Oh, I only just put petrol in it as well. Robert's taken the other car into town. I wish he'd get back. He promised me that he'd be back this morning. You think he's off on another bender? Oh, I can't police him all the time, Frank. He's not a child. What's going on, Lizzie? Nothing. You're seeing Stephen again, aren't you? You two can't keep pithering on like this. If Robert hasn't already worked it out, he soon will. Oh, not if he carries on drinking the way he is. Shit. Pardon my French, but bloody shit thing. Why won't it start? Come on, I'll give you a lift. telescope up and running again, but the pattern has burnt itself onto the lens. It's soaking up light and radiation, but not routing it anywhere, so I can only guess that it's using it as an energy source in its attempts to communicate. It needs more power. I wonder if I could boost the reception by using multiple towers. Take stop. Keep back, you bastard. I know what you've done. Where's Lizzie? 
Where is she? I've got to find her. You stay away. Someone's got to warn them. Someone's got to stop it. You can't stop it. You have to understand. You hate me, I get that. But if we don't do this, it's not just the valley, it's everything, Frank. It's all gone. You're talking bollocks. You can't stop it. Jesus! You take one step closer, I'll bash your bloody skull in, I swear to God. All right, all right, I'm going. But if you see Lizzie, tell her to get out. There's still time. Please, Frank, for her, not me. If you're that bloody caring, you can save her yourself. Don't you get it? I have to stay. Someone has to be here to confirm that everyone is dead. My name is Frank Jacob Appleton. And if you're listening to this, then maybe Stephen was right. And by sending the planes, he stopped it all getting worse. It's a beautiful morning. I wasn't there when Mary died. I was too scared. So I went to the pub instead. What will be, will be, Frank, she said. And I just want you to face it with me. And I didn't. But I will now. I will face it with you now, Mary. They're coming.
Graves! Rachel? Hey, what on earth's going on? It's been awful. The thunder and the lightning and all the power went out. And everyone was in the hall, so I told them all to stay put. And then Sean, Sean Davis said he wasn't going to be told what to do by a stupid bloody girl and went out for a cigarette. And then didn't come back. And then Di, she went out after him and she didn't come back but either. Where is Dylan? Was he with Sean and Di? No, I've been looking after him. Do you think they'll come back? I don't know, Rachel. I don't care what anyone thinks. I just know if he was my baby, I could never leave him. Even if the whole world was coming to an end, I'd make sure he came first. You'd be a good mum, Rachel. Oh, don't worry. It's fine. Go, go back inside and tell everyone that they're doing a great job. A really wonderful job. I just got a few things to finish up here, and then I'll come in and join you. Right. Go on. Weren't you listening to the radio? Because of the flu. There is no flu, Lizzie. Oh, Christ, Stephen, I'm not stupid. Of course there's no flu, but the stations are still closed. There's an access footpath that runs alongside the main tunnel. You can get out that way. They won't have thought of it. You know what's going on, don't you? You can't use the phone anymore. Well, like you're not using one right now. Funny. Listen. Just don't use the phone after this. No TV or radio either. It can hide in the signal. Oh, you make it sound like it's alive. I don't think we have a word for what it is. Just promise me. Don't tell anyone. Pack quietly. Meet me at the station tomorrow, all right? I feel awful lying and leaving all these people here. It was a brilliant idea about the show. Top marks for that, you clever thing. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. We're not even really talking at the moment, if I'm honest with you. I've been sleeping in one of the empty chalets. Otherwise, we just sit there in silence. And then he goes off and pretends he's not drinking from one of his secret little stashes. And I pretend I ain't noticed. And then when we go to bed, it's all I can do not to scream. I don't know why we're still together. Except I do. Still love him. You remind me of Mary when she was your age. If we'd had a daughter, 
I'd have been proud if she turned out like you. You don't have to say that. Just talk to Robert. Tell him you know he's drinking again. You two can work it out together. I know you can. I wish I had your faith. I just don't want to be the person who stayed because they were afraid to move. I know you can't dwell on the past. I know that, but sometimes you do just think, don't you? What if the accident hadn't happened? I could have been anywhere right now, rather than stuck here, rehearsing Peter Bloody Pan and fixing tumble dryers for the umpteenth time. <laughs> oh, Frank, you are an angel. Don't be that. You're still young, Lizzie. You got plenty of time to be whoever you want to be. Just don't keep using that leg of yours or that husband as an excuse. With you. What? Get over here, soft lad, and keep your voice down. Do you know who I am? Yeah? You work for Meg Holloway? Charlie Tate. You can call me Charlie. What's this about, Charlie? Rachel Baker. What about her? Oh, come on, son. I wasn't born yesterday. Are you looking to get your head kicked in? She's 16. She's not a kid. You try telling her dad that. He'll bloody kill you. I love her, though. You can't stop, love. I'm not telling you to stop anything. Just be careful, that's all. But it's a funny shape. Is it sore? I can't feel it at all. Don't fuss over it. I can't believe that you left Kate there. Why won't you tell me what happened? She's probably not even noticed I've gone. Uh, it's really nothing. You're lying. Don't lie to me. Fine. We had a row. She'll work all night anyway. Stephen, listen to me. Was there an accident? Is that how your face got burnt? It's nothing. Something, I don't know. Just got a bit shaken up and then we fought. She wanted to stay and collect more data. Was she burnt as well? Is everything all right? Jesus, Liz, are you sleeping with me or her? She's fine, we're both fine. I don't want to talk about her. I came here to see you. I just worry... Well, don't. Come to bed.
closing the roads. Something about the flu? D- no one here has flu, Sean. There's no flu here. I overheard Mrs. Graves, and she said another family wept and left. She said they must have left last night, but the car and all their stuff's still here. Screw this day. That's 15 people up and left in two days. I don't like it. Where's the baby? Asleep in the caravan. Sean, I don't want to sit around you waiting for it to get worse. I reckon if we leave now, we can get out to the valley before they get their acts together and close the roads. You think so? Yeah, we can go the back roads. Through the woods. I'll leave some money on the side for Mrs Graves. You know her husband isn't back yet either. He's a boozer, right? That's what I've heard. That's her problem anyway. Don't be unkind, Sean. Come on, let's go and get there then. I think it was instant. I, I know that's no help. Can you leave me alone? There was nothing we could do. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, Ben. Oh, you've woken that baby. Just leave me alone. Rachel, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Found it like this? Yeah. I got into the habit of checking in first thing in the morning just to make sure he's had his pills. Mr. Coles is not a well man, Elizabeth. It's entirely possible he upped and wandered off. If things progressed, the mind can be a fragile thing, you know? It's just not very like him, that's all I'm saying, Doctor. He never misses the mid-morning bingo. He didn't smoke, did he? Not that I knew of. There's a funny... It's like ash... Well, that, that is odd. Reese cleaned in here yesterday afternoon. I'll have to have a word. It's not like cigarette ash. Strange. Dr. Wade, there's just been a phone call. We need it back at the village. Apparently, Mrs. Barton has disappeared.
This is Kate Collins and Stephen Appleton. Leave a message. Stephen, it's me. I'm leaving. I've waited as long as I can. If you are there to meet me, I'm leaving for the station now, but I am going anyway, whether you're there or not. But I love you. Please be there. I love you. This is a public service announcement from Hamilton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Local community leaders, head teachers, scout pastors, and members of the clergy will act as your representative during this period to be sure to report any symptoms. You ever seen anything like it? They must be well happy at the observatory place. They're probably all partying there right now. This is right, boss. <laughs> it is. Right. That's me. Short leash. Kids up half for night. Bloody teething. Mrs. will kill me if I'm gone too long. <laughs> Good night, mate. No, I... shouldn't be smoking, you know. Not in your condition. Oh, it's 
Stephen's fault. He got me started again. I'm not going to try and stop you, but the weather's looking pretty rough. There's a storm coming. That's what Stephen said. He said he'll meet me, but there's things he has to do first. He seems to think that all of this is connected to him. I don't know. I, I'm going anyway, whether he comes or not. I'm assuming Stephen has thought of a way through the quarantine. Oh, he's clever. you got to give him that. Do you trust him, though? Well, I love him. So I'd hope that was good enough. I hope so, too. Listen, if you can't get through, for whatever reason, I'm uh, getting people together at the village hall, rounding up stragglers, that sort of thing. Yeah, I've got all the campers together here, doing a show. Peter Pan, the kids love it. It'll take their minds off things. Where did you say that? Baby Dylan, is he all right? He's fine. Die. Come on. It's okay. Let's get you a cup of tea. Mrs. Graves, I need to tell you. Leave it. Die. Do you try and get out of the valley? All the roads are shut there. I know. I was driving really fast, but the other car was on the wrong side of the road, and... Oh, God, I think Die, he... for fuck's sake, leave it. It's all right. Hey, you're all right. Sean's all right. Baby Dylan's all right. That is what matters. Everyone's all right. But no. Now, I need your help. Some of the children, they're getting quite frightened. So, Rachel and I, we decided to push forward the show, keep them occupied. You said the other night you play piano. Can you help with that? Yes, yes, I suppose so. But Mr Graves, Rob... Can look after himself. He's a big boy now. Don't worry. Just head to the hall and find Rachel. She'll tell you what needs practising. OK, thank you. Mrs. Graves. Yeah, Sean. Go and find Reese, please, see if he needs some help. Yeah, of course. Go on. Oh, Robert. Five towers are now operating together, and I've got the reception up to the red zone, but it's not enough. I'm going to try and route the signal through Tower 6 to create a singular point of reception and re-coordinate the optical array, which should, in theory, focus a signal spike on the point of origin. If I conceptualize this origin point as a seventh tower, then it makes a kind of sense. Kind of. I think we're moving so far beyond everything I understand about physics. Office 
either. Well, they live nearby, don't they? Yeah, in the village. You don't think she's gone to look for Mr. Graves, do you? I think Lizzie knows Robert will turn up when he's sober. It'll be all right. Do you want me to go and look for her? No, it's okay. Come on, I promised the kids another shot the last number, then I promised everyone a cup of tea. You're very like her, you know. Like Lizzie. Me? No, I'm not. First chance I get, I'm out of here. <laughs> This is a public service announcement from Haverton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. Local community leaders, head teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. But be sure to report any symptoms of illness. Elizabeth? Lizzie. I've heard a lot about you. It's good, you know, you and Emma, it's not difficult or anything. Should it be? I'm sorry? You said it wasn't difficult. I don't see why it would be difficult. You and Stephen were together a long time ago, he moved away. It certainly isn't difficult for me. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you or... No, I'm not offended. Listen, Elizabeth... But I... Lizzie, please. <laughs> Lizzie. Right. You seem like an okay type of person. And I'm not trying to be rude, I promise. But let's try and be realistic here, huh? Let's, um, try and do our best. It's a British thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I suppose it is. We'll do our best then.
sleeping baby. Darling child. Clouds and starlight. Starlight, starlight. When you wake, you will be mine. Starlight. Sleep and love. Sleeping baby, shadow dust, clouds and starlight, numbered starlight. When we're called to go, we must into starlight, sleep and love. See asleep. You all right, kid? I'll be all right. You should get some sleep, Charlie. You look exhausted. than I can encode it. 
I've already lost two processors. They keep burning out. Please, I love you. You need to get out of there. It's not safe. I need you, Stephen. I need you here. I can open the gate manually. I can let you in. It's too dangerous. You don't understand what's happening no, in here. No, you don't understand. We can solve this. We can find a way. I just need more power. I need to amplify the signal, and I can't do it on my own. You saw the opportunity. You ran the numbers, remember? We're responsible for all this. You and me. <laughs> it's not just you and me anymore, though, is it? Jesus, Kate, you're trying to talk to it, aren't you? Kate, you can't. Stephen, I have to. Completely dead. It won't start. It's only a short walk to the camp. I think we should split up. You go and fetch Rachel. I'll go back to the village and find Evie. I don't think we should split up. I don't want to either, Charlie, but we've got to. I'll meet you back at my house later on, OK? We can talk properly then. Why won't you tell me what happened? No, no, actually, you should stay at the camp tonight. Come and find me in the morning. Bring Rachel back. She's going to need her mother. Meg. Just take care of her. Meg! What is it, Charlie? Nothing. Just be careful. I will, I promise. You as well. I'll see you later on. Why on earth are you there? Why aren't you calling from home? It's hard to explain. I'm having to move around to follow it. When it finds a suitable host, it begins to amplify... Sorry, I'm not making much sense. They're talking about flu and a quarantine on the radio, but this... I know you're not that kind of doctor, but it all just sounds really weird. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but it's got something to do with the other night. Stephen, your face, the mark, do you think you're infected? It's not a disease, Lizzie. It's something else. There's something Kate said about patterns. I can't grasp it clearly yet. Okay, come over. Have some lunch. We can talk properly. Have you spoken with Kate? Well, she's locked herself in the observatory. She's buried in the data. But it's already out here in the world. I need to see how it adapts. How what adapts? Stephen, try to explain. Turns up. Lizzie, listen. Be ready. I need to go. It's moving again. I'll call you later.
you think she'll like it? It's in a North or State, Stephen. I don't It'll think It'll be an so. adventure. It'll mean putting down roots here, maybe a family. Are you sure she wants children? What, to stay here? It's not her place, you know. Don't start that again, please. I mean, she's ambitious, love, and she's swell. Older. She's not going to want to stay cooped up at home looking after the kids. Is that how you felt about me? Oh, stop it, Stephen. That's not what I meant, and you know it. I'm just saying you should make a choice. If it's a family you want, well, you know how much Lizzie wants a family. Jesus, Mum, I didn't come here for marriage guidance. I just asked what you thought about a fucking house. Stephen Appleton language. Sorry, it's just that you have to understand. Kate is the most brilliant, extraordinary, wonderful person I've ever known. She's, she's like no one else. The way she looks at things. It's like she has whole worlds inside her head. I don't think you or anyone really understands that. Physical changes are evident. Although the butterfly burn is now faded, I can clearly see the change in my pores up close. As I record these words, I can feel myself hearing them as if for the first time, as if I'm both speaker and listener simultaneously. I am a scientist. I can only deal with the evidence I have. And this points in one simple direction. It's not in the observatory.
Holmes, you know the protocol. That doesn't matter now. It's figured out how to circumvent the telecommunications blackout. What? I didn't think it could. Kate understood. She saw how adaptable it was. How smart. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're talking about it like it's alive. You have to assume that everyone here is infected. We can't know We're that. We're infected. It's killed all the birds, and now it's in us. It's trying to leave the valley any way it can. The quarantine is not enough. You've got to remove the carriers. You've got to cut off its energy source, its food. I've already told you, Stephen, I'm not going to water you an airstrike. You have to. Now it knows we're onto it. It's going to keep on spreading as fast as it can. The quarantine and blackout will hold it in check. They've cut all of the phones out of the valley, so it's only you communicating Aren't out you now. are you listening? It's figured out ways around it. Radio waves, something. All of the lines are cut, but the phones are working anyway. You've done all the right things, but it's not enough. You've got to stop it before it adapts again. Stephen, my my family, my, my wife and kids. You know perfectly well what you've got to do. I can't do it. Don't ask me to do it. You're asking me to sign their death warrant, my own family. Damn it, don't you think I'm aware of that? I'll still be here when you drop the fucking stuff. Don't you lecture me about sacrifice, you spineless little shit. If you're so full of ideas, you come here and try dealing with it. Tell them the time when we had a choice is over. Tell them to do it. You've got to do it now. You look well. I don't, but thank you. You do. How are you settling in? Nothing changes around here. I mean, it's great to be back. It still feels like home, I suppose, in a funny kind of way. It's been a long time, Stephen. Last time you saw me, I could still walk properly. You look pretty good to me. Stop it. For what it's worth, I'm sorry about how things worked out. Or didn't. Or didn't, right. Do you think you made a mistake leaving? My mum tells me it's never too late to change things. To put things right. Funny. It's just what she said to me the other day. I have been wondering oh, what she meant God, by that. That's <laughs> embarrassing. Sorry. Yeah, oh, maybe I should go. Why? Stephen, we're both married. I don't think this is a good idea. What isn't? We're just two old friends having a drink, that's all.
the valley. Don't you get that? This isn't some abstract thing. Whatever came down into the tower has got out. They've quarantined the whole valley. It's right here in the observatory. It's out in the world. It's adapting and spreading. Do you understand? No, we can't turn it away. It's come too far. Okay, people are disappearing. Shut it down now. No. If you won't help me, I'll do it on my own. I'm gonna route all the power back through Tower 6. Kate, wait, wait. Oh, it's trying to break through again. Kate, wait! What do you want me to say? You knew what you were getting into. Really? Well, I'm sorry we don't measure up to your exacting standards, Dr. Collins. Maybe you just need to give us ordinary humans a break. What? Ordinary humans like Lizzie Graves? Did you really think that I wouldn't find out? Frank told me. Or did you forget there's one person in this shithole who actually talks to me? Kate, it was just a dream. Don't bother, Stephen! Oh, for Christ's sake. Kate, slow down. You were engaged to her, Stephen. You nearly married oh, her. Oh, come on, it was just a drink. Then why the hell did you lie to me about because it? Because I knew you'd be mad and then it would end up in a row. You wanted to focus on the event tonight. Oh, so you were actually doing me a favor. Wow, I guess I just forgot to say thank you. Do not treat me like I'm an idiot. You're overreacting. I know, I know you're stressed. Just... This is crazy. in my eyes again. I can't move my legs, can't feel my face. 
When I collapsed, the light was waiting for me there. Caught me, lowered me here. Now it's pooling around my feet, watching me. The printers are spewing out page after page of zeros. It's frightened, too. It'll be okay. They closed the tunnel. There's no trains. I've put up a sign. The tunnel, Howard. Is it closed? I think so. I don't like it. It's not right at all. Stop whining. It doesn't help anyone. Did you know you're bleeding? Oh, it's this headache. It's just killing me. I haven't had a nosebleed like this since I was a kid. But you've not been to the village? No, I've been here the last couple of days or at home. I've only spoke to Clive at the EMC on the phone. Well, tried to anyway, but with all the cross lines... It'd be... But no direct contact with any other people. No, no one. What are you talking about? What's going on? It's the pattern. It's adapted again. It doesn't need direct contact to transfer. It's using the phones. What do you mean, direct contact? Stephen! we're carrying, it's burning my lungs. Probably some kind of nerve agent.
Watson. What are you doing here? You thieving bastard. I knew it was you. Listen, take everything you need. But then you have to leave. You don't understand. You can't be near me. Painting these stupid little pictures. Stealing food. You always were a little prick. Please, every second we're in proximity makes it worse. I'm a primary conduit. You're a fucking disgrace. Come here! Don't touch me! Get off! What's going on? Come in here! Lord, Jesus, get over Sam. us! Thinking you're so much better Sam, than the rest No physical you contact! You stupid fucking missus! Sam, She's it. better than any of you! <laughs> Sam? Meg, please. Don't, don't come near me. Meg! Charlie! Meg! Meg, wait! Don't touch me! Meg, please, you have to understand. It was an accident. Get off her. Let go. Let's just go. Charlie, you have to understand. It was an accident. Just leave him. Leave him. What have you done, Appleton, you bastard? Come on, Charlie. Let's Meg, just get Charlie, out of here. Meg, Charlie, please! old bird walking all the way out here for it. You know Charlie would have dropped it off. What, and have that stinking great lorry of his poisoning my birds? He shouldn't be driving it on these lanes. It's a hazard. I think he was hoping he could have a word with you about Frank. There's nothing to say. Oh, listen, Wendy, they might all be scared of you, but that's not going to work with me. You're 68 years old. Grow up. Talk to Frank. How dare you speak to me like that? Give me my bird feeder right now. Promise me you'll drop by and see your brother. Megan Holloway, give... Not a chance. Promise me. It's for your own good, and you know it. You are a shamelessly manipulative and difficult woman. It's no wonder Charlie adores you so much. No wonder I do what? No wonder you never finish what you start. I thought I told you to check the incoming stock orders. Wendy, one bird feeder for you. I'll tell Frank you'll stop by. Oh. Charlie, stop mooning around and stick the kettle on. Make yourself useful. Seen it. They do, though. You're overreacting. Stephen, they stare at me. <laughs> Yesterday, I went into the village, and this old woman just stopped in the middle of the street and stared at me like I had two heads. Oh, don't be so melodramatic. <laughs> I'm like a walking freak show. Oh, this place. It's so insular. I just don't understand how you grew up here. Well, I was very different then. And they're not so bad, really. That's easy for you to say. Just give it a bloody chance, Kate. This was the deal. A year here, and we could be in with a real shot at Lucia. Stephen! Oh, Christ, it's Lantham. Stephen Appleton, I thought it was you. What's all this about a young wife? Oh. Um, hello. Two heads, Stephen. Hi, I'm Kate.
Colin Stephen. I don't know if you'll ever listen to this. Uh, maybe you've decided to stay with Kate, and I, I can't blame you for that. But I can't wait for you either. I've got to think about the baby. And, well, <laughs> I should have left a long time ago. I've run out of excuses for not leaving now. But I do love you, Stephen. And I hope you find peace one way or another. Oh, there's planes coming. When I was a kid, my dad found a fox. It had been hit by a car and couldn't walk anymore. My mum went spare, of course. Made him keep it in the shed. He was already slipping away from us then. He spent hours with that fox, telling it all about Italy and the villages they bombed there. I was... I was jealous, I think. The fox got more of my dad than I did. But it was dying, that was clear. So one day, I snuck out, took it a sandwich for food. I was only eight. When it bit me, I remember the anger, the shock, the hurt. Running in, screaming from the garden, my mum panicking about rabies. My dad beat it to death with a spade. I found him crying. I'd done a Ken, son. That's what he said. I'd done a Ken, it was hurting you. That's just a poor, dumb, dying animal. It doesn't know it's hurting us. Christ help us, it's left the valley. It's everywhere now. It's been three hours since the planes went over. I haven't been able to reach anyone on the shortwave. 
I'm beginning to think I may have made a terrible miscalculation. ever love from me. You've made me do things I never even thought I was capable of. But if you think I'm coming with you... Kate? Wait. Stop. Kate. This is Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left.
the plane, Stephen leaned across me and pointed out of the window. Down there, he said. That's home. But all I saw were patches of color. I don't think until this moment that I understood that one could contain the other so completely. I watched a butterfly dancing in a strip of sunlight. All of its life contained in a single day. The blink of an eye between the ebb of the darkening tide. Lying there with the pattern curled around me, I saw the inevitability, the necessity of presence born from absence, the constant unfolding. I know it didn't mean to hurt any of them. I try and explain why Lizzie tried to leave with her child and why it was wrong to stop her. I try and explain that much of what it did was wrong. It shows me Stephen and Lizzie together. And I'm happy for them. Frank walks his fields with Mary. Wendy and Edward nest together in the orchards of their love. Jeremy lies at peace with his God at last. All of them are happy because they are together. I understand it better now. It is a collector of time. No butterflies.
I watched the pattern lean in and time slow to almost nothing. I saw the flame leap from Steven's hand and the moment hang in the air forever. I watched his face. And in the last second, I almost believe he saw me. He wasn't frightened or angry. I remember his expression, just like I remember it from the first time early that morning when he woke and still half sleeping said, God, I love you. And I loved him as he entered the fire. And I let him go, knowing I wasn't ready to join him. We have held time to ourselves here in this place, held the light to the ground because we were afraid of the coming dark. But now we understand that to cling to the light is not living. I've spent my life watching the illumination from a million dead stars reaching for me without grasping this meaning. The light we cast transcends our death. The pattern made by our living creates a bridge across the dark. reaches out from the shadow of the tower, across the observatory, over the valley, and consumes the world. Everything is light now. Everything has come to rest. The world is scored by the traces we carved into it. Our presence is everywhere, the bridge joining our stories. This world existed before we came to it, and it will continue without us. In the empty fields and houses, our traces radiate, and others will come to dance in the light we cast. We can slip away gently, unafraid, knowing that everything will continue.
the end is coming now. I'm not afraid. We have each other. We lived apart from them. We understand now our failure to touch, to belong. But it doesn't matter anymore. Everybody is gone, and we will join them. We are born apart, driftwood on the banks of an endless dark ocean, and we will be carried away by the swell soon enough. But in between, in the single day of living, that dancing in a strip of sunlight, we can find what we miss. The love that makes us whole, the imminence. Everybody found their other. This pattern is mine. <laughs>